What are antagonist muscle pairs? Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in today's video we're going to explore muscle pairings. In particular, this is going to help you if you're working towards your level 2 anatomy exam or your level 3 anatomy exam. Also, if you're doing your level 2 gym instructor where you need to know about the types of muscles that are worked in certain exercises and in level 3 personal trainer where you need to know about specific training systems like the agonist antagonist superset. Now, before we go into today's content, I want to let you know there are three mock questions that will help test your knowledge based on the information we talk about today. So if you're on our blog, just scroll down to the bottom of the blog where you'll be able to test your knowledge or you can click the link that is with this video and you will go straight there. So before we dive in any deeper, let's first of all find out about what an antagonist muscle is. And then we'll explore some different examples of these agonist antagonist pairings. So first of all, an antagonist muscle is essentially an opposite muscle. Now, all muscles work in pairs. Now, that's every single muscle in your body has an opposing pair. They're kind of like husband and wife. Now, they have to ha work together. They can't work apart from each other. And it's essentially that like when one muscle is talking, the other muscle is listening. So it is just like a husband and wife pairing. And in order to have a good conversation, one needs to talk, one needs to listen. Now, we call this reciprocal inhibition, whereby one muscle is contracting. That could be concentric, which is getting shorter, or eccentric, which is getting longer. However, at the same time, the opposing muscle must be relaxing. So I'll repeat that again. One muscle is contracting, the other muscle is relaxing. And this always happens within these set pairings. It can't move away from those set pairings. It stays within these set pairs. And that's because each muscle in our body works with a pairing and they're paired for life. <laughs> so we're going to explore what each of these different pairings are. So you know what the agonist antagonist pairs are and you're going to notice that they become either side of a joint. So, for example, we'll start with the bicep and the tricep. Notice that they both cross the elbow. So as both cross the elbow, one is in front of the elbow, one is behind it. So they do opposing actions. So it's not just that they're opposing muscles or they're a pair of muscles, but as the bicep flexes the elbow, the tricep extends the elbow. So that means that you can always work out which of the pairings are, and you can work out what pair there is to the muscle that you're focusing on, as long as you know what joint actions are occurring when that muscle is contracting, which shows the importance of knowing your anatomy and physiology. So let's explore some of these examples of muscle pairs, because this will really help you, especially if you need to program any supersets that use this re reciprocal inhibition. First of all, I said bicep brachii and triceps brachii. They are either side of the elbow. One creates um, elbow flexion, which is the biceps, and then the other one creates elbow extension, which is the triceps. Now let's have a look in the legs, the equivalent but over the knee. We've got the hamstrings and the three muscles that make up the hamstrings. These are on the back of the leg and they contribute to leg, uh, leg flexion. So you're getting knee flexion, aka like a leg curl machine. Then you have um, the quadriceps, which are the opposing muscle, and these work with leg extension or knee extension. So they are opposing, just like what you've just seen at the hinge joint of the elbow. Now, as we look at a little bit deeper, people can get a little bit confused on some of these other types of pairings. So let's start with the glutes. So the glutes are renowned for doing extension of the hip. So we're looking for the opposing muscle to be something that will do flexion of the hip, which has to be the hip flexors. So your iliopsoas or even your rectus femoris, which is part of your quadriceps. The other pair that I want to talk about is the down right down in the leg. So right down lower leg, we're looking at the gastrocnemius, which is the back of your calf, basically. And this crosses the back of your ankle. Now, the gastrocnemius helps with plantar flexion, which is pointing your toes, whereas the opposing action is dorsiflexion, whereby you're bringing your toes towards your nose. Therefore, that's going to be your tibialis anterior, which is on the front of the leg. So gastrocnemius is opposite to uh, anterior tibialis. Now, just to sort of move it up the body a little bit. So we've covered the lower body. Let's move it up the body and look at this part of the chest. So first of all, if we go right, the chest, the pectoralis major, works at creating this horizontal flexion whereby we're sort of doing a pec fly motion and bringing our arms towards. So that pec fly motion, the opposing action of that is going to be horizontal extension, which is actually working our mid traps 
and in that is our antagonistic pair your pectoralis major and your mid trap so it all happens on this horizontal plane so now let's have a look at the shoulder the deltoid basically does abduction whereby you're bringing your arm up into a capital t position and this is abduction of the shoulder so the opposing action is adduction of the shoulder which means it's going to work the latissimus dorsi so we have these two that work opposing latissimus dorsi and the deltoids now the final pair that i wanted to talk about is going to be the rectus abdominis which is your six pack muscles in front and they work with spinal flexion and then the opposing muscle must create spinal extension which is going to be the erector spinae so that creates that sort of back raised position or back extension so now you've got several different pairs that you can work through and know that these all create reciprocal inhibition. When one of these pairs is contracting, doesn't matter which one, the other one will be relaxing and that's what makes them a pair. So what you can tell is that we basically found the muscle, we thought about what joint action worked and then we thought what the opposite joint action must be and then we could work out what the pair muscle is. Having said that, you only need to work it out once and I've done it for you so you can just learn these pairings and it will make it much easier for you in future. But it does show the, the importance of needing to know your anatomy and physiology both at level two and at level three. And it's going to really help your confidence and knowledge as a personal trainer or a fit pro. So what is really important is that you dial down on that anatomy and physiology knowledge so that you can be confident. And in order to do that, we have our revision boot camp. Now, our revision boot camps are designed to give you everything you need to pass either of those exams at whatever level you're studying at. So if you are looking for more help and more interested in being able to pass your exam with confidence, but also plan and understand the bodies that we have as fit pros and that we're planning for with our clients, then click the link that is with this video and it will take you straight to our revision bootcamp page. Outside of that, make sure that you scroll down and use the three mock questions to test your knowledge. I would also love to know what your big takeaway has been from today. So all you need to do is drop a comment underneath today's video and let me know what your big takeaway is. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.